So now that we have a working menu, so we can quit the game, we can go to our credits, and we can go to back to our main menu and we can click new game. So let's set up the continue button. Basically what we want to do is make it so the player can save to where when you get to a certain checkpoint, the game will automatically save the player's location. So let's go to the main menu script here where it says our continue button. We're going to add an and and we're going to connect it up just like we did all the other ones. So we'll remove from frame right there, connect the button click into the top socket of the and then if true, we're going to connect that into the bottom socket of the AND. That way when we click on the button, this will happen. What we're going to want to do is set scene. So we just want to set the scene of our, we want to set our first level, so our test level. Connect these together and then select test level. So currently if we just press play and we press continue, it will just load our game as usual. But now we want to save some data. We want to save a global list of values that we can edit between scenes. You cannot send a property between scenes. To do this, let's add in a save variable. So we're gonna add this guy in here and we're gonna call this file name. This will be the name of the JSON file that we save and we're gonna call this global and the variable. So this is going to be the specific name of the variable we're saving. So we want to make sure that this is always a unique name. That way we have an actual list of variables. So we're going to call this set player loc, L-O-C, and this will be for location. We're going to be saving this as a Boolean because what we want to do is say, if we press the continue button, this is going to be true. And in that case, we are going to set the player's location. We don't want to set it all the time. That's why we're going to add this globals value, make it a true or false. And we're going to just connect the and into this save file. So we're going to do it like this. Now we need to find a file path. So we're going to put this in our game folder. We're going to create a new folder and call this globals. And this will be our global value. And just hit accept inside of that folder. Now we want to be able to save this value. And when we save this value, it needs to be true. Make sure to duplicate this. Then we're going to add in a on int when this scene starts up then we want this to be a false value because we don't want it to be true all the time. No matter what happens, if we go to the main menu, then this will always be a false value. But if we click continue, then this will be a true value, sending the player to whatever your last save was. If we press play and we hit continue, if you go over to your game folder, go into globals, you will have a new globals uh, JSON file here. We can open this JSON file up. I have Visual Studio Code. And you can see we have our player variable, which is set player location, and it is true. But if we go over here, I'm just going to close this for now, go into the game, press play. We start the game up, and then if I just quit the game without clicking on anything, we're going to go back to that file, open it back up, and it is false. So this is going to be setting this to true or false, whether we click on this button. So let's just close that up now that we have this and we can use this anywhere. Now what we want to do is go over to the player movement script. For now, let's just go over to the main scene. So test level and in player movement, let's just go over here and we're going to add in another save variable. To save the player's location, we need to save a vector three. So we're going to need three of these. We're going to need one for the X, Y and the Z axis. So we need to activate these. So just do a key down for now. So we'll just do key down, keep it on tap, and then if pressed. So we'll just connect these to all of these. And I'm just going to do the L key for now. We're actually going to make a separate file for these because we don't want to put these in our global variables. Those are going to be separate for scene switches and other uh, data collection. So what we want to do is make a new file name, and this is going to be called player save data. And this variable is going to be called player location so player underscore look and you can change this to whatever just put it on integer for for now because it's not going to matter we're going to be grabbing raw data from a get position node so let's get the world position we also need a separate x y and z like so so just connect this together the world position into the vector we can hit the person icon to select the self since we are just adding this to the player script for now I actually made a mistake. We're going to change something. So we're going to connect these. So this is going to be the X, the Y, and the Z. 
we have the file name as player save data. So this variable is actually going to be the X. So just put in X, Y, and then Z. So just make sure that these all match up to the corresponding axis that the separate X, Y, Z is sending out. We'll be able to see this in our new file. Let's go file path and we're going to add in a new file. So we have our globals file here. Let's add in a new folder. And this folder is going to be called save data, save underscore data. I like to put underscores, no spaces, just for cleanliness and habit. <laughs> so for save data, just hit accept. And then we'll just put this in the save data folder. For all of these, just go down and make sure to select the save data folder for every single one of the save variables, like so. We can actually test this out now. If we press play, we can walk around and if we press L and then go out of the game, we can go back to that folder. So just go back, save data. We have our player save data. If we click on this, we will now have a file with our player's coordinates in it. With this data, we can actually set the location of the player to whatever our last save was. So let's just close this for now. So now what we have to do is add in a load variable. So we'll just set this here, remove from frame, and then select the save data file. We just have to hit accept. Don't worry about clicking on the file itself. So we just want that directory. The file we want to access is the player save data, and the variable we want to access is the x, y, and the z variable. So just duplicate this a couple of times, make one the y axis, and then make sure they're all spelled correctly. It's cat, it is case sensitive. So x, y, and z and we'll just leave it on the default value for these variables. So now what we can do, get a vector x, y, and z, like so, and a set position. Set world position, there we go. Remove from frame, connect the vector into the value, just select self, and then for each one of these values, the x goes into the x, the y into the y, and the z into the z, like so. We need a trigger, so for now, just for testing purposes, let's add in a keyboard, key down, and we're just gonna choose the return key. Leave that on tap. So now if we press play, and if I press the return key, we'll be set to whatever our last save location was. You do something dumb, like save on a lily pad, and then you could press the return button and forever be stuck in a loop of doom. <laughs> now we need to make it so when we hit the continue button that it will do this for us. For now, let's just go in here and make a new save location. So if we press L, we'll save our location there. So what we're gonna need to do is add in a evaluate property node. Add that guy in there, remove from frame. So if true, then it will play. Because it is a true or false, if this value is true, then it will do it over and over and over and over every frame. So we want to actually put in a once, otherwise our player won't be able to move. So just connect that in there like that. Don't worry about changing anything else. Now click on the player and we need to add in a new property. So this game property is gonna be player location. Turn this into a Boolean because it's gonna be a true or false. So select self, set player location, and then set it to a Boolean. We want it to be when this Boolean is equal to true, then we will set the player location. So now we need to load in our global value. So what we'll do is go over here and do, we'll do another load variable. We need to grab the file path of our globals file, accept that. Then we need to obviously type in the globals name, globals. Let me just go over to the main menu, make sure I grab the proper globals file. So set property or set player location, grab that bad boy and we'll go over to the player movement again, just drop it in there. So we have our globals file and then our set player. We just want the default value out of this file. And then we're going to grab a set property node. So we're going to use this to set that set player location that we added to the player. Grab the self icon, set player location, set this to a Boolean. It doesn't even really matter because we just set the connect the value into there. Now we're going to want this to happen when the game starts up. So we're going to add a on int node like so. Connect the on int into there. And so now we are grabbing the globals folder, the globals file name, and setting the player's location to true when we hit that button. So if we go into the main menu, and for example, if we were to hit new game, we go to these, we go to the regular start location. But if we were to press play and hit continue, 
we will be set to whatever our last save was. In fact, we can show this example. If we go up the ladder, we can come up to here. We want to save before we tackle this B obstacle. So we'll hit L. Oh, I need to uh, quit the game for a second. Oh, okay, I'm ready to play again. Hit continue. And it will set the location of our last save.